Well, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. We appreciate the, the good spirit of God. Ask that uh, you be much in prayer for the service this morning. Uh, turn with me this morning in Joel chapter 2. I uh, want to preach for a little while. Uh, th th this chapter has uh, 32 verses. Uh, God be my helper. We're going to try to get through them really quick. I know that it sometimes seems like it's a little long and lengthy, but uh, there's not anything in here that I want to pass over. There's not anything in here that I want to uh, uh, skip over. Let's say it that way. But uh, I had a thought this morning. It'd be uh, the sealing of the minds of the elect. Father, promises in this day that we're living and even in the near future that he will seal in the minds of many people the way that things are going to happen. And it's done through a format, the way that Lord sees fit. But um, here we are in Joel chapter 2. Let's pray. Precious Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to stand. As Father, that you would lead God and direct us this morning. We thank you for your blessed word. In the precious name of Christ, we'll pray. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. He said here in verse number 1 in Joel chapter 2, he said, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm. In my holy mountain, let all inhabitations of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. We could shut the Bible and say that we have preached the gospel this morning. Let me say it like this, that a church inside this nation today should be blowing a trumpet. Amen. Now, Amen. If you don't understand what this trumpet means, trumpet means an alarm, okay? He is sounding an alarm. There is something fixing to happen. Amen. So this trumpet needs to be sounded. And let me ask you like this, uh, those that are watching on the Facebook page this morning, uh, how is your church getting the truth out? How is your church getting the true word of God out? They're where you belong. They're where you tithe. They're where you are a, a, a person there helping inside the church. How is your church getting the truth out? Here at the Fresh Start, we do what we can uh, on our Facebook page. We have gone as far as to uh, develop an opportunity to get on the YouTube and get it out. And uh, also here in the community, we want to try to uh, do our part and do our best. What are we doing here, brother? We're sounding a trumpet. Amen, amen brother. We are sounding amen. a horn, letting people know what's out there on our sign. Amen. The sign says, warning. Yeah. Where is there being warning preached in the gospel today? Amen, Is brother. warning going out to the people? No, uh, I, I'm afraid not. I, I hear so much of an easy believism. Uh, uh, you're under grace and don't worry about anything. Uh, uh, friends, if you're not prepared uh, for that coming day, uh, friend, it's going to come upon you as a thief in the night. Amen. Uh, and, and Amen. That's exactly how the word said. Amen. It's important that the people are warned. It's a need to be warned today. Warning is not going out. People don't have the urgency to realize that something is coming upon this world today that's going to devour it. Amen. I'm talking about devour. Amen. Okay? Amen. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Bless them. Okay? Don't be scared, in other words. Why is that? Because God uh, is on our side. All right? Amen. If you are following Amen. the Lord and Learning the word of God the way you ought to, friend, you are prepared to the uttermost. You have every amount of equipment. Ephesians chapter 6, you are fully fitted with the armor of God. Amen. And that to stand against the whales of the devil. Verse number 2. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Now that should really perk up the ears. 
I tell you, I, I wouldn't know that there'd be a lot of people that's ever read the book of Joel. Why? Because it don't tie in with the Gospels. It don't tie in with a whole lot of things. If you've ever done much studying in the book of the Revelation, you'll need to get into the book of Joel, okay? Our Bible study, which is coming this Monday night, we will be in the ninth chapter and the tenth chapter of the book of the Revelation. And if you know what happens there, you understand, okay? But he said here in verse 2, a day of darkness and of gloominess. Darkness always is depicted of deception. So what's that trying to say, Brother Randall? Just like it said here in verse 1, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Yeah. Warn the people. Why? Because there is coming a day of deception Amen. upon the earth. Amen. Amen. People will be deceived. What type of minister would I be if I knew this and didn't warn the sheep? Amen. Amen. What type of man of God would I be if I didn't go and try my best to get everybody uh, warned? Amen. Now, what you do with that warning is up to you. That's right. They sound that alarm over the television. They sound it over the radio. Yeah. And they tell you that a bad wind is coming, a bad storm is coming. And you'll see in different homes, if you had an aerial view, you'd see some of them kick back and say, well, that thing ain't going to bother us. Why? Well, I, I, I ain't worried about that. I, I, I'm in a, a fortress here. I, I'm fortified and I've just got all kinds of protection. Then across the street, you see a mama and her kids. She said, honey, get everything you want and let's get down to the basement. Let's get down to a safe place. Some people take heed to the warning. Amen. And some will not. Amen. As long as we are doing what we are supposed to do and sound the alarm and warning about this day to come. He said here, he said that this day of clouds of the, as a thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains, upon the nations. Great people and a strong there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Now, friends, if that don't wake you up this morning, if that don't sound an alarm in your heart and your mind, I don't know what kind of gospel you've been reading because that should let you know that God is doing everything he can through his prophets to warn us about this day of coming. That's right. We're living in a generation, friends, and this generation is fixing to come to a pass. That's right. It's Amen. fixing to come to an end very shortly. Amen. All right? This people here, he's going to talk about them here in verse 3. In other words, this in verse 2, this is the warning, okay? This is the warning that he's trying to warn us of. Verse number 3, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burner. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Yet, I have not explained who the people are yet. But I'm telling you, first of all, they're bringing deception upon the land. Mm -hmm. Amen. They come to do what? To steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. That's exactly what they're doing. Sound like to me that Satan. Sound like to me they have a little something to do with Satan. Well, you get right in here. It says uh, a fire devoureth. Now the fire here is lies. Okay? A fire of lies that just walks through and burns and devours everything it can. It devoureth before them and behind them a flame burning, fueled by deception. This flame will be fueled by deception. And what will it do when you see them come? You ever, uh, you ever been out there and seen no hot rod, buddy, and it, 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 it kicks in, boy, lets out the clutch, and it, it leaves a big old black mark? You know where it's been. Yep. That's exactly the same way of these people. When they come through, you're going to know where they've been. Okay. Now, this is spiritually speaking, Okay. Don't let your mind go to think that the world's going to catch on fire and burn up and all these things. These people going to—it's not that way. This is spiritually speaking. These people are going to do such a great destruction that it's recorded here in the book of Joel. Okay. Behind them, a flame burneth, which is deception. 
The land is as the Garden of Eden. It's a lush, ripe field right now, is it not? Amen. Right now, we have a lush, ripe field in front of you and I. What's that mean? The word says that uh, the harvest plentiful. is plentiful. That's right. Amen. But the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Let's pray unto the Lord of harvest that he sends in laborers. Why is that? Because they're ripe on the vine right now. It's ripe on the vine. It's right now when this needs to be taught. Amen. Right now is when the warning needs to go out. Amen. Right now is when the preaching needs to start. Amen. Right now is when people need to realize that there's something coming upon this earth that you have never, ever in your life seen or never will see again. That's right. Amen. Have I got everybody's attention yet? Amen. I'm telling you, this is very important. This is something that will happen. Amen. This is not a, a, a fairy tale. This is not a, a fictional idea. This will happen. Amen. This will come to pass. Amen. And you will, if you live, we will see it. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> he said, in the Garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Do you see the need for the warning? Do you see the need for the alarm? Amen, bro. These people are very powerful. They have come to do no good. That's right. Verse number four. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Now I'm going to give you their description. Here in Revelation chapter number nine. Go with me to Revelation nine. Verse nine. Revelations 9 and 9, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings were as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. This is Satan. These are Satan's group of misfits that will be upon this earth in the latter day. Amen. Brother Randall, I ain't never heard nothing like that. I ain't never heard no such thing. Oh, I, I, I just want to get saved and go to heaven is all I'm wanting to do. I just want to get saved and, and me and my wife and, and just, just go into heaven. That's all we're after. Well, I'm sorry, friends. The word of God has declared that there will be an invasion upon this earth of angelic beings that will come to devour mankind. Yes. Well, I've never heard no gospel like that in my life. I've never heard nothing like that. Well, I'm sorry that your minister has never taught you that. I'm sorry that your Sunday school class has never went over it. I apologize for the uh, the absence of the teaching. But here I am today in 2018 telling you this will come to pass. Amen. And you better be prepared for it. And when it comes, very few are going to be able to escape their ways. They're going to have some serious uh, power about. Verse number five, back in Joel chapter two. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap. I just read that to you in Revelations nine. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Now, this will be Satan's great revival that he will do. If you'll flip with me real quick over to 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 5, and verse number 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Mm -hmm. 
This will be the great revival that Satan will hold during this time. He will hold it, and friend, he'll say peace and safety for the world. You know, I've brought this out many times, and I'll use it a lot of times in when I witness with people, and, and I'm talking to other Christians and things of that nature. And you know what? More than half of them seem to think that that peace sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Well, the problem with that, it's a deception. Yeah. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. He'll hold a apple in front of you, but it be rotten to the core on the inside. You yeah. understand that? Yeah. It's kind of, don't take me to court over it, but it's kind of like going to McDonald's and getting that sandwich and you, and you get that tomato on it. It looks like a tomato. <laughs> it cuts just like a tomato. But friend, when you eat it, it ain't nothing like a tomato. Amen. Not, not any kind I've ever pulled out of the ground. Amen. It's, I don't know where they come from. So what I'm getting at is, is that when they come, that peace and safety is going to be a lie. Yeah. They're going to end up turning on the people. You understand? Amen. Amen. They'll end up turning on the people, those that went as far as to trust them. Verse 6, back in Joel 2, Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. Now, this blackness is a paleness in their face. Why do they turn pale? What would make you turn pale? Well, when you are suddenly brought to the truth of what has went on. When somebody finally reveals to you, uh, you thought you knew, uh, you thought you understood, but you have been living a lie all your life. That's the paleness that he's talking about here. That's what's going to happen when the people come to realization that they have followed the wrong Jesus. Amen. They did not wait out for the true Christ to come. This church here, and it says it on our sign. Do you know when the true Christ arrives? Yes, sir, we sure do. Amen. Yes, sir, we sure do. When does he come, church? At yes, the sir. last trump. Amen. Amen. The furthest trump out. How do I know I'm not going to miss him? Because we're going to wait on him. Amen. Amen. We're going to wait on him. And he ain't going to let you miss the boat. Amen. He ain't going to let you miss that opportunity to go because when he comes, he's coming to get all that belongs to him. As we spoke about how that blood has been applied to your heart, Jesus done what? He put a earnest down on you. Amen. And when he comes to redeem that which belongs to him, he will redeem that blood back to him. You Amen. understand that? Amen. So therefore, he will not leave you. He'll not leave you out, and you won't be a, a mistaken amongst all the others. You could be nestled in amongst a bunch of unbelievers, and you'd be one of the only that God chose. Amen. But remember that there's an army coming. Verse 7, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like my, men of war, and they shall march everyone on his way, and they shall not break their ranks. In other words, friends, these people that are coming, these spirits that are coming, they are very disciplined in what they are to do. They are very disciplined, just like as those who are of the house of Rechab. They are very disciplined. They follow their father a whole lot better than the children of God father their father. Amen? Amen. These people are very disciplined. Nothing will stop them. They will not be stopped. They will devour and go right over. And if you are in the pathway and you do not have that blood applied to your heart and you are not studying the way you ought to be, you'll be just like those uh, in the land of Egypt in that day when the death angel came by and they didn't have the blood applied to them, uh, uh, their first went off. Amen? They died off. Mm -hmm. Be the same concept. Amen. When they come, it don't matter. Man, boy, woman, girl, child, if you haven't been taught and don't know the understanding, they'll devour you. Verse number eight. 
Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be devoured, mm -hmm. nor be wounded. Mm -hmm. Only God can stop these. Yeah. Only God can stop these. And I'll tell you why. Let's, uh, let's go over to Revelation chapter 11 real quick. We're going to be running around a little bit this morning. You have to kind of do this here to be able to get confirmation of all things. Revelations 11, verse number 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. God will stop this army. Amen. God will stop these people. Amen. And here in just a little bit, you're going to see why. Verse number nine, back in Joel two, they shall run to and fro in the city. Huh? How are they going to run? Just like Satan, to and fro. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. That's what they've come to do. They've come to steal, kill, and destroy. But you see, their message is not going to be an evil message. It's going to be a message of deception. Remember that? It's going to be a message of lies. How are they going to come? Daniel told us exactly how he's going to come. He's going to come in peacefully and prosperly. He's going to have a check in every mailbox for everybody, and he's going to cease all fights, you see. All arms will be dropped. People's going to think that's wonderful. Yeah. People's going to have that all sealed up in their heart and their mind. They're going to love that idea, you see. <clears throat> Verse 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun, the moon, the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before whose army? His. His army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide in it? Amen. Now let me say to you, those that understand the word of God, those that have the seal of God in their forehead, these people will not harm you. Why is that? Because they are directed by God. God will direct them. Well, I thought that was Satan's army. Satan is even directed by God. Nothing will harm you that God will not allow. Do you understand that? Say amen. 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 God will not let not one hair upon your head be harmed. Why? Because these that are coming to devour and to tear down belong to him. He has devised this. Why has he done this? For the correction of God's children. He's done this to correct those who do not understand. Those that are preaching an easy believism this morning. Those that are preaching an any moment doctrine this morning. Those that are preaching a, a, a fly away theory, a rapture theory this morning. God's bringing these upon the earth because of them and their cause. If everyone were to get in the line and do as God has showed him to do, wouldn't have this problem. Amen. But seeing that there are people that are disobedient and have no desire to follow God's word, they would rather go to traditions of men, yeah. listen to what a man has to say, yeah. because it's a fairy tale and it sounds a whole lot better than God's word, then that's what they'll deal with. Mm -hmm. They will answer to these. Amen, bro. It's not coincidental that we're bringing this out this morning because our Bible study Monday night is going to be virtually on the same people, okay? But this is the way God led us to go, and this is where we are this morning. Verse number 12, 
Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Now he asked him to do something here. He said, turn, turn your hearts and not with a feast, but with fasting, okay? Mm -hmm. And with weeping and with mourning. Why should we weep and mourn and fast? For those who have not followed God, they've been doing it wrong the whole time. Mm -hmm. But for a minister to go out and stand in the congregation and tell them that they've been doing it wrong all these years, friend, they will not listen to you they barely will listen to the Lord. They barely will let God get their attention. Oh, but he will get their attention. Believe you me. They will come to the realization one day. Amen. Thanks be unto you that you have been in the way of the Lord 101. Amen. You have gone to the class and, and been in the way of the Lord 101. You are ahead of the schedule. You understand that? You are ahead of the class. I used to like it when I was in the military. They had uh, the basic training. They'd come in and you would see them coming in in groves. They'd come in about every month. And uh, after you'd been there for a little while, you're kind of kind of grin. You're thinking, boy, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not those guys any longer, you know. And when you finally do graduate and you get ready to get out of there, you look back and you see a whole brand new troop coming in starting exactly doing exactly what you have done. You were ahead of them, you see. It's a blessing to be ahead. Amen. But let's not get the big head by being ahead. Amen. We need to share the gospel and let people realize that there's a problem in this world. The problem is that people are listening to fables Amen. and not the word of God. Okay. Verse number 13. And wring your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. This turn again. This is return. Okay? That's why Jesus told one of the churches there in the book of the Revelation. He said, I have somewhat against you that you have forgotten your first, first love. love. Uh -huh. That's why he said, return. Return unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and of great kindness, and repented him of evil. I'm going to go over to Romans chapter 12 real quick. Romans chapter 12, and verse number 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not con formed to this world. Did you see that? He's yeah. trying to tell you, don't be like the world. Listen to what I'm telling you. That's right. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind. It's your mind that what Satan is after. Yeah. It's not your body. It's your mind, which controls your soul, that ye may Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 3, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every man, woman, boy, and girl has the same opportunity. When they stand before a true and holy God, they will not be able to say, well, I didn't get a chance. I did not know. I didn't have an opportunity. God's made a way. And that's why Jesus said that the gospel does do what? Must be preached throughout the world. Amen. Why we ought to preach the gospel. What gospel? The any believism? The rapture theory? No. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. This right here. The Amen. warning for you and I to know that something's going to happen. That's right. This is not a maybe. I'm going to say that again. This is a definite. This will come to pass. That's right. These angelic beings will be upon this earth in our day. Amen. As they were in Genesis chapter 6. 
That's why the scripture has to tell us that in this day that a woman ought to have a covering over her head because of these angelic beings. We're not talking about a ball cap. We're not talking about a shawl. We're talking about Jesus Christ being over the heads of these women. Why just the women? Not just the women and the men also. Why is that? Because they're going to come to devour. They're going to come in the same spirit that they had back in Genesis 6. We read over in Revelation 9 that when they loose them out of that place that right before the river of Euphrates, that there are thousands and thousands thousands. There's a lot of them. That's two million if you want to add that together. And how many are we sitting with uh, on the earth today, Brother Bob? About seven billion. So you got two million versus seven billion people. That's a fair percentage of people. And they're going to have their way. They're not going to let anything bother them. They're going to come through and they're going to devour. And they're going to be fueled by Satan. Back in the gospel here, back in Joel, verse 14. Who knoweth that he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? In other words, he said, who knoweth if... (coughs) You will repent. That word he, he's not talking about God here. He's talking about you. He said, who know if you will repent and leave a blessing behind you, even a meat offering. Do you know what the meat offering does? It sustains you. That meat offering will sustain you to be able to carry on, okay? And that drink offering is a blessing that flows. So all these things that are going to come, there's going to be a meat offering that is going to be given in that day. If you repent and you follow the way of the Lord, it's going to sustain you all the way through the coming of the Lord. And then also he is going to let that drink offering come, which will be a blessing. You will be blessed amongst people. None of the problems of the world will harm you because you're following the God that truly loves you. You're following the Lord and you're following the right way. Verse 14, excuse me, 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. This is a warning by the church to warn the public. A solemn assembly is meaning that we are to warn the public. Now, I've known so many times that people shut their doors and, and they don't want really anybody to know exactly what they're teaching. They've got their own little congregation and, and they just uh, they just enjoy teaching, don't want to make no waves. And friend, I'm not here to make no enemies or waves. Amen. I'm here to get out the gospel. Amen. I'm here to preach the word. If it her lips the devil, I don't care. I'm going to tell it. Amen. Because it needs to be told. People are living their lives today and have no realization that something is coming as detrimental as this. God's allowing it. And he's doing everything he can to warn everybody of it. 16. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. That a symbol is in your hearts. We are to sanctify the congregation and a symbol in the hearts, the elders and all of these people. We are to put it into the hearts of God's people to realize, yes, this is coming. Yes, there will be a problem on the earth, but it will not affect you. Amen. Always remember that. As Horrible as it sounds and devastating as it sounds. And you begin to read it and you think, oh my gosh, how are we going to be able to get by this? It's not going to affect you. This wrath that's going to be poured out, this trib, as to be said, this tribulation that will come will not be upon you. It's only against those who will not follow the way of God. That is the 
the basis of this ministry right here, that we teach the right way and that we are getting out the word of God for all people to realize, friends, that there's a whole lot more to this. Amen. A whole lot more to it. Verse 17, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, uh -huh. and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question this morning. Can the heathen of the world identify you as a Christian? Do you stand out when you walk down the street? You should. When you are in a public place or you are in the world, working, coming or going, can the heathen identify you as a child of God? If you mingle and you look and you act and you curse and talk just like the world, friends, they're not going to be able to do that. But if you have a godly sense about you and you have a love of God in your heart, which is the love of God, people, you are a different people, you see. The Bible says that you are a what? A peculiar people. Amen. That's what you are to be. It's exactly what he wants us to do. That's what they said. The heathen should rule over them. And where should they say among the people, where is your God? <laughs> Where's your God at? Who is it that you worship? That should be an eye opener to everybody this morning. That we are to conduct ourselves as children of God. And that people, when they see us, they realize that, friends, I am straight, and I want to everyone to know that I'm straight. Mm -hmm. Straight being straight as a gate, amen? It's important today that you put out this uh, warning, and you give everybody a glimmer of God. There's not a whole lot of that going on today. God is not very visible in the world today. Not even in the church houses. Amen. Amen. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting people down. I'm just putting down the, uh, the uh, idealism that they have, the doctrine that they have. It's not the right way. They're God's children and God loves them. And there's time right now. There's a time of repentance. Amen, bro. If they would come and open their hearts up to God. Amen. Verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn, wine, and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therein, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. This will give you, I will stand for you with corn when you stand for the word of God. I will give you the wine when you stand for the word of God. Amen. I will pour the oil upon the wounds that you have Amen. if you will stand upon the word Amen. of God. Amen. And it takes a little bit of enduring on your part. That's right. It takes a little bit of doing on your part. God said, I'm going to have everything. You see, my father owns the cattle of a thousand hills. That's right. And the hills thereof. Amen. He owns it all. Yes, sir. Ain't nothing been made that, that wasn't made by God. That's so right. So therefore, if he wants to give me a blessing, he owns it. Amen. He don't have to go borrow or, right. or have to go and buy. or that Friend, it belongs to him. Amen. And if he wants to give it to you because you're studying the word of God, Amen. he will do that. Amen. He will bless your home. He will bless your work. Yes, he sir. will bless your family. Yes, and sir. he'll bless your church. Amen. God will do that. Yes, he will. If you will study the right way. Amen. It's Amen. all about the studies. People can say, oh, I've been a good person all my life. And I don't ever say bad words and things of that nature. But what type of doctrine do you study by? What do you understand? What do you know about the coming of the Lord? Oh, well, I don't know anything about all that. I just know what my church believes. And I, I, I'm on their paper. I'm written on their log that I'm a part of their family. Your church attendance is not going to get you into the glory of God. That's right, brother. You being with a big old church and paying your tithes every Sunday and all that, friend, that's not going to get you into the glory of God. 
knowing uh, the way it happens and preparing yourself for the coming of God, that will help you. Amen. And that will be the only thing that will help you. <laughs> Other than having the blood of Christ applied to your heart. You must first have salvation before you're ever interested in the work of God. Amen, okay? brother. Amen. Right. Didn't want to leave that part out. Didn't want anybody to get misunderstood. I get a lot of things on the correction. A lot of people like to correct, but that's okay. All right. Verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Now, this is a different army. Okay. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great thing. Who is he talking about here? He's talking about Esau, Rosh, Russia. Okay. He's talking about the army of Russia that will come in that day. This will be a battle that God will fight, not man. This will be a battle of Armageddon. Mm -hmm. And God will be the one who will devour this army. That's right. Amen. When all sanctions are set aside, you understand that? When the Antichrist comes in and says, peace, peace, what's he going to do? Well, he's going to take all of these weapons uh, that everybody has, and they're going to try to devise it to work for good, you see. And Russia's going to be over there and say, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll turn them off. Yeah, we'll turn all of our clackers off and all of our bombs, and yeah, we'll, we'll do all that kind of thing. But they don't realize what's happening is that they're moving closer and closer to the borders of Alaska. And when they come walking in, friends, now let me ask you this real quick. Sharpen up for me. God allowed the United States to purchase Alaska. And I think it's for one reason. For a burial place of Russia. Because at the right time, and at the perfect time, when they come, they will come. And they will try and, and invade the Christian nations. Mm -hmm. They will come through, the Bible says, through the land, which is right here, toward the East Sea. In other words, where they come in, Alaska will be east of that, you see. And that for the hinder part toward the uttermost sea, and his stink shall come up. Why is that? Because God will devour them. He will fight that battle. You will not have to worry about it. That's right. You'll not have to worry about any of that battle. Mm -hmm. And their stink will come up because of their rotting corpses. Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Will he do great things for you? Amen. Amen. He's going to do great things, friends. You're going to see him take out an army. Yeah. That no man can take out at that time. Right. Has anybody got the picture yet? Amen. The picture is this. They're eventually going to come and get all of the weaponry of the world and do away with it. You understand that? Mm -hmm. your, pruning hook, your pruning hooks will be beat into what? Plow shores. Amen. You will no longer use these as weaponry. You'll use them for farming, as the way it's said. And they'll have that opportunity, who? Russia, to come right on in. Everybody will be vulnerable. They'll be in the sanctions. Yeah, oh yeah, we'll, we'll comply. We'll work right along with you. But they're liars. And they are heathens. And they are not of God. They do not follow God. Nor do they even believe there is a God. So that's why it's going to be even a more of a blessing when God devours them himself because it will be God that will show them. Amen. And they'll say, well, are those missiles coming at us? No, no, that's uh, that's uh, rocks falling out of the sky on top of your head. Amen. And destroying everything that you have. 
22, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. 23, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Amen. A little bit of horticulture right here. Everybody understands what happens at springtime. What kind of rains do we get, Claude? They're real easy, ain't it? Sprinkles, just nice, good sprinkles. What it does, it does not take and wash the ground away. It gives you an opportunity for the germination of the seed. That's the same way of God. When he brings this to you, he don't stick you over here in the book of Joel to get you to try to figure out these things. What he does, he puts you over in the gospels and lets you learn about salvation. Amen. That's what we need. Amen. But once you get past that, God's not going to let that former rain go all the time. You understand? Eventually, we're going to need the latter rain. Now, what does the latter rain do to the crops? It keeps them from going blast, does it not? It fills them up and gives them all that they need to the day of harvest. You see that? That's what God's going to do for you. And what did he say he's going to do? He's going to give you the former and the latter in the first month. That's a blessing. You should have shouted right there. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. Yes, sir. Here it is. All right, verse 24. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. These floors are the harvest, okay? 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Now, see, we have not spoken about the locusts yet whatsoever. But we understand that that's what this army is that come in the first part. Okay, this is the locust army that will come with Satan. Okay, these are the angelic beings. He said, I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Now, see, I didn't make that up. I told you that it was God's army. He sent them to do what? To teach his people exactly how it needs to be done. He's trying to wake up the eyes of the people today. Amen. Wasn't nothing worse than getting a pop quiz in school, mm-hmm. was it? Nope. You get that pop quiz, you're thinking, "Oh my gosh, I didn't even, I didn't even know we we're going to have a pop quiz today on that." That's right. God will not do that to you, friend. That's right, amen. God will not give you a pop quiz. He'll not put something on you that He hasn't already trained you and yeah. foreled you to know. Amen. He will not leave you emptiness. He will not leave you without some sort of a warning. Jesus said in Mark 13 and 20, I have foretold you all things. That's a blessing. God's given it to you. It's up to us individually to figure out what we're going to do with it. Throw it over in the corner and let it lie or pick it up and read it and be prepared. (laughs) Again, This ain't something that's something that uh, it's out of a movie. This ain't some kind of fictional thing. This will happen. Amen. Verse 26. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of your Lord God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. How come his people won't be ashamed? Because he loves them more than he does anybody else? No, friend, because they study the word of God. Study the word of God. Prepare yourself. What it says in Timothy, isn't it? That's right. Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needs to not be what? 
ashamed. That's right. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Afterward, in verse 28, afterward, this afterward means after they have come. This spirit, this pouring out of the spirit and this prophesying will come after this locust army is on the earth. Mm -hmm. It will come after. Okay, we get on down here. I want to show you something. 29, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. Mark 13 and 9 tells us what they're going to do when they're needed. These that have the spirit of God, when the spirit poured out. Verse 30, and I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and a pillar of smoke. This pillar of smoke is showing the signs of the time. Now, what he's going to do here, this is the same as in Acts chapter 2 that Peter was talking about. Let's turn over to Acts chapter 2 real quick. I'm about to come to a close. Acts chapter 2. In verse 19 to 21. Let's go 18. And my servants and my handmaidens will I pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will shew wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and a vapor of smoke. Same thing as the pillar. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This comes to play after Satan's locust army comes mm -hmm. to the earth. Yeah. Okay? And as it said here in verse 31, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Verse number 32 to come to a close. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Amen. Let me say it like this. There will be many that will have their minds opened in that day. Many people will finally come to the realization. How is it? Well, I look at it like this. That those that are listening today secretly to our messages here on the Facebook and many others that are preaching the true gospel, eventually when this does start to work itself in, it's going to click. It's going to click that they are very well may have been waiting on the wrong Jesus. That they very well may have been going after the wrong one. And many will be saved during that day. Try. Many Amen. hearts will be changed. Amen. 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 But I want you to realize something. That as long as God sees fit for this church to stand, we will continue to blow the trumpet Amen. and sound the alarm. Amen. That something is fixing to happen. Something's fixing to happen. If we ain't careful, a lot of our friends and loved ones will be devoured by that army. Amen. Amen. Joel chapter 2.